Ideas about the structure of the atom began to form by the end of the 19th century. In 1897, the famous English physicist Joseph John Thomson proposed a model of the atom in which the positive charge is uniformly distributed throughout the volume. He attempted to explain the properties of atoms by the position of negative particles, electrons, embedded in a cloud of positive charge. Advancements in experimental physics altered these notions, and the next step was taken by Ernest Rutherford. In 1911, together with Geiger and Marsden, he researched the passage of alpha particles through a metal foil. Alpha particles, traveling at approximately 19,000 kilometers per second, easily penetrated the foil. The distribution and quantity of flashes on a fluorescent screen indicated that some of the particles passing through the foil were deflected. By moving the screen, Rutherford discovered that approximately one in 8,000 alpha particles was not just scattered, but reflected back. Later, Rutherford stated, it was quite the most incredible event that ever happened to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15-inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back and hit you. This cannot be explained unless we assume that the majority of the atom's mass is concentrated in a tiny nucleus. Its diameter is as small compared to the atom's diameter as a coin's diameter compared to a gigantic lunar crater. Thus, the planetary model of the atom emerged. According to classical electrodynamics, the energy of such an electron continuously decreases and it should fall into the nucleus. The emissions from the electron should have a continuous spectrum in reality, the spectra of all atoms are line spectra. The simplest spectrum is that of hydrogen, consisting of several series. The series of lines visible and adjacent to it in the ultraviolet region of the spectrum forms the most famous series, the Balmer series. It was named after the Swiss scientist who discovered that the wave numbers in the series vary according to a certain regularity. The numbers on the screen show the wavelengths in angstroms corresponding to the lines of the series. Balmer provided an empirical formula that allowed obtaining the exact value of all the wave numbers in the series. Here, R is the Rydberg constant, and N can take integer values from 3, etc. Later, it turned out that the dependence for the wave numbers in any of the other series of the hydrogen spectrum is expressed by formulas similar to the Balmer formulas. The formula took on a more general form and the quantities T were named spectral terms. This equation is applicable to the spectra of other atoms as well, but its physical meaning was not clear. It was Danish physicist Niels Bohr who managed to identify it. He utilized Max Planck's idea of quantum, the smallest and indivisible portion of energy emitted and absorbed by atoms. If the electron of a hydrogen atom has a certain energy, then for this energy to decrease, at least one quantum must be emitted. Conventionally, we will represent quantum as a ball flying out of the atom. The energy of the quantum can vary, and any change in energy occurs only in specific portions, 
meaning the energy of electrons in the atom can take discrete values. The meaning of spectral terms became clear. They are proportional to the energy of the electron in the atom. If the energy of the electron in the atom has a value E1 and then E2, then the wave number of the emitted quantum is determined by this formula where H is Planck's constant and C is the speed of light. Bohr hypothesized that a specific energetic state of the electron in the atom corresponds to a specific orbit. The closer the electron's orbit is to the nucleus, the lower its energy. Bohr managed to calculate stationary orbits for the hydrogen atom. Transitions of the electron from a more distant orbit to a less distant one are accompanied by the emission of a quantum. The spectra of any elements are like fingerprints of the frequencies of all photons emitted by atoms when an electron transitions from one permitted orbit to another. Stationary energetic states are depicted as energy levels and transitions are represented by arrows connecting corresponding levels. It was later postulated that electrons in the atom can move not only along circular but also elliptical orbits, having different orientations in space. However, further development in science deepened the understanding of the structure of the atom. The next step in the development of the microcosm concept is associated with the name of Louis de Broglie and his discovery made in 1924. He substantiated the dual wave particle nature of microparticles. Interference and diffraction are characteristic of wave processes. In interference, waves from two slits on the water surface extinguish each other along the nodal lines of the wave. The intensity distribution curve is characterized by alternating smoothly decaying maxima and minima. If instead of waves, beams of particles fall on the screen from the slits, then according to classical theory, a smooth distribution of intensity with a single maximum is expected on the screen. However, for an electron beam, Instead of the expected pattern of smooth intensity change, an interference pattern with alternating maxima and minima is characteristic. Look how similar it is to the interference pattern of waves from two slits. In this experiment, the electron beam exhibits wave properties. Louis de Broglie hypothesized that any material particle with momentum p is analogous to a wave with a wavelength lambda and is determined by this formula on the screen. Using these concepts, it was possible to explain why an electron can only orbit in Bohr's atom on certain orbits. Let's imagine the electron as a wave. If after completing a revolution, the wave returns to its original point in phase with the initial wave. Such a wave is amplified. If the wave arrives in antiphase, it is extinguished. The orbits for which the first condition is valid are precisely the stationary orbits according to Bohr.
However, the wave particle properties of the electron and the laws of its motion could not be expressed in the visual language of classical mechanics. The new mechanics, based on the works of Austrian scientist Erwin Schrödinger, became known as quantum mechanics. The laws of motion in it are expressed by the Schrödinger equation. Here delta is the Laplace operator, M is the particle mass. E is the total energy of the particle. U is the potential energy. The wave function psi determines the state of the particle or the probability of its presence in a volume element. Modern concepts of the atom operate with the notion of an electron cloud. The density of the electron cloud in different regions of space is determined by the probability of finding an electron in them. An electron cloud of a certain configuration is called an orbital. Thus, modern theory has abandoned the planetary model of the atom. The motion of the electron is conveniently examined in a polar coordinate system with the center coinciding with the nucleus of the atom. Then, the position of the electron is determined by the magnitude and angles of inclination of vectors. The probability of finding the electron in a specific region is determined by the square of the absolute value of the wave function. Electronic clouds for different electron states are uniquely oriented in the coordinate system. The notation of orbitals contains information about the shapes of the surfaces that bound the space where most of the electron cloud is contained. The state of the electron in the atom is fully determined by four quantum numbers. The first three determine the geometric characteristics of the orbitals. The principal quantum number n determines the average distance of the electron from the nucleus, that is, the size of the orbital. For the simplest atom, the hydrogen atom, the number n determines the energy of the electron. The quantum number l determines the magnitude of the electron's angular momentum and characterizes the shape of the orbital. The quantum number m characterizes the position of the orbital in space. The properties of an electron determined by the quantum number s can be imagined by analogy with a spinning top. Like one spinning around its axis, the electron has its own angular momentum, spin. There are two possible orientations of the electron's spin in space, corresponding to rotation either clockwise or counterclockwise. One corresponds to a value of plus one-half and the other to minus one-half. The radial probability distribution function of the electron's presence in the atom is determined by the quantum numbers n and l. This is a graph of such a distribution, depending on the distance from the nucleus for the 1s state. When rotating the graph, the maximum distribution will describe a circle coinciding in radius with the radius of the first circular orbit in the Bohr model. And this electron radial distribution function has a more complex nature. Here, there is no correspondence to the Bohr model. But the higher the principal quantum number n, the higher the probability of finding the electron at large distances from the nucleus. The simplest orbital corresponds to the electron state with the quantum number n equal to 1 and l equal to 0 and a specific energy. This state is denoted as 1s. The electron cloud here is spherically symmetrical. When it receives energy in the form of a quantum, 
the orbital changes. The quantum numbers take values corresponding to the new energy state. The cloud takes the shape of a dumbbell. According to the Pauli exclusion principle, there cannot be two electrons in an atom with the same four quantum numbers and the maximum number of electrons that can have a given principal quantum number n is limited. Since n determines the average distance of the electron from the nucleus, all electrons with the same n are called an electron shell and are denoted by specific letters. Understanding the structure of the atom allows us to grasp the essence of the periodic table of elements. On a schematic diagram with circular orbits, the periodicity of physical and chemical properties discovered by brilliant chemist Mendeleev can be explained. A wave fragment will remind us of the wave properties of the electron. The first element of the periodic table, hydrogen, has only one electron. The second element, helium, has two electrons. With it, the filling of the first layer, the K layer, ends. Therefore, helium is not reactive and belongs to the noble gas subgroup. The next electron layer, the L layer, can contain up to eight electrons, and its filling begins with the element lithium and ends with neon. With its filled outer shell, neon is also inert, like helium. The periodicity of properties is associated with the fact that the chemical properties of atoms are determined by the number of electrons in the outer shells. Undoubtedly, our understanding of the structure of atoms will deepen further, as only in 1970 did the electron microscope allow the first atom, a uranium atom, to be photographed, while being incorporated into a complex organic substance.